All right. So welcome, 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 guys, to Money Talk. Um, happy Thursday. You know, it's been an amazing, amazing, amazing week. We've been talking a lot about a lot of great things. As you know, we've been talking about the wealth formula. And by talking about the wealth formula, you know, we've been discussing a lot of great things in regards to money, in regards to, uh, you know, time, rate of return, um, and, to, you know, even inflation. And today, I have the great pleasure of talking to you guys some more about taxes. Now, I don't know about you guys, but paying taxes ain't one of my favorite things to do. But I pay my fair share, right? I will pay my fair share of my taxes, but I'm not all about paying taxes, but I pay it. Because if you don't pay it, they will Wesley snipe you in a heartbeat. You hear me? You'll be sitting there in a yellow jumpsuit and that'll be the cutest thing you could know for a couple months, if not years, if you play with the IRS. So, like I always tell everybody, there's two people I don't mess with. I don't mess with the CIA and I don't mess with the IRS because they don't play that. So, let's, let, let's get into it a little bit today, right? I want you guys to get into it a little bit today. I want you guys to go back. Like I said, we're going to go back. We're going to take it back a little bit. How did this whole IRS thing and how did this whole Federal Reserve thing come into play? We got to know a little history. Now, there was a time where America got themselves in a little bit of shangles and they had to borrow some money where the banks, you know, there was a time when the banks will bail out America, not America bailing out the banks. There was a time like this, you know, guys. There was a time where America was in some trouble and it was J.P. Morgan who had to come in because he was one of the richest men in the world and he came in and helped out America. The story says that it's almost like he said, if you can't manage your money so well, turn over the country's wealth to me and I will manage it since I have to keep bailing you guys out. And that's when JP Morgan gained access to all of those information and stuff like that in that manner. Like I said, do your research, find out how did JP Morgan Get that. But that's not even the part that really matters. The part that you got to know is how did the Federal Reserve get put into place? And how did that come about? Now, there was a meeting that took place in 1910. This is a very important date now. So here's what I want you guys to do. All right. I want you guys to go to your Google now, right? Because I'm teaching you guys. I'm going to teach you guys now. Go to Google. And I want you to put right in 1910, right? And then type in also Jekyll. So if you don't know how to spell Jekyll, I'm going to spell it for you. You're going to put in 1910 Jekyll Island meeting. So it's J. E K Y L L I S L A N D meeting Jekyll Island meeting. So when that comes up, you're going to see the Federal Reserve history. It says the meeting at Jekyll Island, right? The meeting at Jekyll Island. If you want to know who are some of these men, please go look and learn because these six men change how we look at money ever since. 
So it says here, 1910, six men, Nelson, Aldrich, it was Andrew, Henry Division, Arthur Shelton, and if you guys don't know Vanderlip, then you guys definitely don't know your history. Right? It says the need for reform. This is where they had this meeting, guys. And I would tell you to go read that history. And you better know that history because that history changed everything about money. How many of you ever heard of this meeting in 1910 on Jekyll Island before? Yes or no? Right? Yes or no? I want to know who knows it. Whoever knew of the story of this. Okay. See, they don't teach you this in history class, do they? Right? Oh, so everybody else knows it. I only see two people that says no. Okay. All right, no. Yeah, then you got to wonder why they don't teach this history. Right? Why they don't teach this history? Why do they never talk about this history? Because this history played a very important role in how we look at money today. So 1910, there was a meeting on Jekyll Island. And then, let's go back to our Google again. It was 19... 12, watch this, put a 1912 Federal Reserve Act. Do you know what that means? Now, 1912 Federal Reserve Act, it will come up and it says the 1913 Federal Reserve Act signed into law by President Wood, you see his name? Woodrow Wilson. Gave the twelve gave twelve Federal Reserve banks the ability to print money to ensure economic stability. The Federal Reserve System create the dual mandate to man the, uh, maximize employment and keep inflation low. <laughs> to keep inflation low. That's what they said. They said the system created a dual mandate to maximize employment and keep inflation low. It says the it says goal. The Federal Reserve Act of nineteen thirteen established by Federal Reserve System as a central bank of the United States to provide the nation with a safer more flexible and more stable monetary and financial system. Hmm. So now, why am I talking about this? 1913 Federal Reserve Act was signed into law. All right. Scroll back again. Let's go back to our Google. Let's give you some more insight. Put 1913 income tax rates. I want you to type this in because it's important you learn this. Type in 1913 income tax rates. It says the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 lowered the average tariff rate from 40% to 26%. It also established 1% tax on income above $3,000 per year. The tax affected approximately 3% of the population. Only 3%. So how is it now? 
so many more have been affected by income tax over the years since 1913. So what is taxes right now? All right, let's talk about taxes right now. Now, I'm gonna give you some knowledge. But give me a second. I wanna tell you the exact pages to go to. And it's important that you know these pages. If you know, I'm going to my handy dandy saving your future book. And I want you guys to always turn to page 15 and on very, 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 that very same page 15, it says a quote. It says, Benjamin Franklin said, there's nothing certain in the world except for death and taxes. Benjamin Franklin said, if you make money, they tax you. You spend money, they tax you. <laughs> you save money, they tax you. You die, they still tax you. Think about that. Did you know estate tax is one of the highest tax you will pay? You're dead. And they're still taxing you. Well, maybe not you. You're dead. They tax your family <laughs> on your estate. So look at the history of income tax. If anybody on here can predict what taxes will be in the future, please also predict some lot of numbers and tell me. Because I'll buy it. All right? In 1913, the tax bracket rate was at 7%. This was the first permanent income tax. It's on page 15 in your seven year future book. It says 1917 it was at 67%. World War, World War I financing. 1932 was 63%. The Depression era. 1941, it was 81%. World War II. 1944, it was 94%. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Did you hear what I, I just tell you? 94%. This was called the Individual Income Tax Act of 1944. 1964, it was 77%. That was during the tax reduction um, during the Vietnam War. 1981, it was 70%, the Reagan era tax cut. 1988, it was 28%, Reagan era tax cut. 1991, it was 31%. It said the Anubis Budget Reconciliation Act of 1990. And 2003, it was 35%. This was the Bush tax cut. 2013 to 2000, 2013, uh, due to the uh, Obama era, it was 39.6%. American Taxpayer Relief Act of 2012. Why, why, why? Can you predict what taxes will be in the future then? I just went down a line of different times and different tax taxes. Can anybody on this line predict what taxes will be? How many of you think? All right, let, let me ask a question. Let me ask a very honest question. Uh, it's a very serious question, I should say. Based on what I just said, how many of you think taxes will go up in the future? If you think yes, hit yes. If you think no, hit no. Go in your participant section right now. If you think taxes will go up in the future, hit yes. If you think taxes will not go up in the future, hit no. Right? All right. I'm seeing a lot of yes. I'm seeing a lot of green on the screen. So, is taxes bad? Right? Is taxes bad? No. Right? Tax is not bad. But it's, <laughs> we don't have a taxing problem in America, guys. We do not have a taxing problem in America. 
we have a spending problem in America. We have a big spending problem in America. And until we get a grip on that spending problem, taxes will always look like a problem. Because we spend more than we actually own. We live off credit, borrowed money, than we actually have money. It means as if that if you make $20,000 a year, you have access to another $10,000 credit card. Your income just gone up to where you say, hey, I got $30,000 a year now. But realistically, you don't have $30,000 a year. You have $10,000 of debt that you could take away from your $20,000 because you don't know how to live within your means. So a lot of people call it good debt because it builds your credit. So you get credit on debt. And they tell you that you can acquire assets with good credit because you get credit for acquiring debt. You know, is that a reason why I didn't go to college? It just didn't make sense to me to why I should go in debt and then pay someone. I didn't understand that. I didn't understand the theory of America. Maybe I was dumb or maybe I was just stubborn. But I just didn't understand the whole idea of going in debt to get a good job, to then get the good job to pay back the debt. No, I'm sorry. I thought it was a dumb idea. Not knocking anybody that did it. I'm just saying it was a dumb idea in my eyes. I just, I'm a hustler. I can't be feeling like I was getting hustled. I felt like I was getting hustled. I was like, no way, you're not gonna hustle me. If that's the case, I'd rather go work my three jobs, save up my money, and then I'll pay for school out of pocket. I'm not, I'm not borrowing nobody's money. No way. It didn't make sense to me. I'm sorry. But a lot of people believe in this logic. You know, and then they hang up that, that diploma under the wall, and every time they look at the diploma, they feel accomplished, but at the same time, it's a constant reminder. Sally may need her money. Right? So let's talk about taxes again. Right, because I was going to go off on a whole different drift. Now, on page 16 in your Saving Your Future book, it talks about something that, that we don't talk about here. Many of you guys are going to go vote this election coming up. And I don't like talking politics, but I'm going to say this. How many of you, or how many times have you heard any of these politicians? talked about our national debt. Have anybody, if you hit yes or hit no, have any of you heard your politician, red side or blue side, talk about our national debt? Have any of them addressed inflation problem in America? Have any of them ever talked about this? So how are you guys gonna vote for these people? Why are we not asking these questions? You see, guys, <laughs> maybe I'm just a revolutionary type of person, but I bring things to people's attention where they don't pay attention to it. And I said, I'm not voting for nobody until someone starts addressing inflation. I wish I could go to one of those things where I just say, I don't care about your who's this and who's that. I want to know, hey, what are you going to do about inflation and the national debt that keep rising? Because I don't want my great grandkids to hate me and say, daddy, it was your error and my parents' error that destroyed their future. I, I, don't, want, I don't want to be that bad. That's why I love that our national campaign is focused on educating families because I don't think we have, you know what? I can even go back on that word. I can say, you know what? America don't have a tax problem and America don't have a spending problem. America has an education problem. Do you know that America, <laughs> oh boy, if I say this, this gets a lot of people in, the, in their pants. Do you know America is not even one of the smartest places in the world anymore? Do you know that the American education system is not even listed as one of the top in the world anymore? But yet still, people that have to come from a foreign country have to come in America and have to redo their certification outside of whatever country, even though they come from a country that's listed as more smarter people. 
They have to redo it the American way because that's the system. A lot of people will key on, well, what about Harvard and Columbia University? These are very prestigious places around the world. People come from all over to go there. Yes, but there's also a little I, uh, school in Jamaica that's called um, UWE that a lot of people around the world go there to go learn how to be a doctor as well. You never heard of it before, but some of the greatest doctors come from out of that school as well. And then they got to come back to America and retake their tests to get their certification. Crazy. It's crazy. But guys, the mountain debt. Why am I on the topic of taxes? It says that as of January 2015, the U.S. debt stand at $18 trillion, a burden of 56500 per citizen. Those numbers have gone through the roof now. Because that debt is now moved up. Okay, let me tell you the exact number. Let's go back again. Let's go back to Google because you guys like to Google stuff. I know people like to research things. Go to Google, type in debt clock dot org. Or you can just type in debt clock, right? Debt clock, D-E-B-T-C-L-O-C-K, debt clock. And I want you to search. And you're going to see it says U.S. Debt Clock. This is public information for you guys as well. This is not Keon Corner being smart. This is public knowledge. So as of right now, our U.S. national debt, it is $26 trillion, $6,061,000,000. Seven hundred and eighty-two million, and the the and it keeps growing. I guarantee before this call ends, it will be at seven hundred and eighty-two million, eighty-three million will go up. As a matter of fact, as I'm talking, I'm gonna tell you when we hit seventy, eighty, eighty-three. But think about that. Now it says debt per citizen. The debt per citizen is now eighty. Thousand seven hundred and seventy-four. Oh yes, and we just hit seven hundred and eighty-three million. It says debt per taxpayer now. So debt per citizen is different from debt per taxpayer. So per the person that paid taxes, we are at a debt of two hundred and fourteen thousand three hundred and twenty-two dollars. Think about that. Think about that. How many of you ever look at this debt clock before? Yes or no? How many of you? Right? So why am I talking about this debt? Well, look at it. You don't got to ask me what I, what I think. Think about, look, look at how much is going towards our, 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 our debt. Right? What, what, what is, what is the, the interest? It says U.S. total paid interest. Right? Paid interest. Look at that. It's only $3.8 billion. Only $3.8 billion. Tax revenue is only $2.6 billion. Hmm? And we're supposed to be sitting here, jumping around, having a great old time, enjoying life. Right? Look how many personal debts we have. See, guys, if you don't start paying attention to these things, how are we going to win the money game? Our grandkids will hate us. They will hate us. They'll be super mad at us because we racked up all this debt. We allowed people that we voted for to do this in representation to us. You guys keep saying the government, the government, you is the government. We are the government. We need to start choosing the right people to be in government. So you need to educate yourself. You need to educate your children and start teaching them 
the difference between the legislators, the Senate, because you guys are ready for our presidential election, and you don't realize that the president is not the one you need to pay attention to. It's the Senate, Congress, legislators. Did you, man, I'm not going to get into that today. But y'all, y'all, y'all better wake up. You guys are so fond about the, I almost said the presidential election is a distraction. Because you still don't understand that the president can't make any decisions without Congress and the House. Are you, you guys not realizing that since Trump been in power? I hate to even say his name. I can't believe his name will be, always be on my money talk now. But you got to realize this, guys. This tax issue that we're dealing with is because still, even when you think about it, people don't understand capital gains and capital loss. People don't understand what it means to get taxed now, taxed later, and tax advantages. 85% of the population use tax now. They think that's the best place to save their money in their checking, saving, CD, stocks, and mutual funds. 10% of the population think it's good to use their money in a tax later vehicle. Their 401ks, 403bs, IRAs, SEP IRAs, annuities, and pensions. 5%, only 5%, understand what is tax advantage. And they use things like Roths. You know, I always joke around and say, that word sounds very familiar to a very familiar name. You don't believe me? Type in the word Roth inside of your thing. So put Roth name, right? Roth name. And, and when it comes up, it's going to say Roth name history. Put in the Roth name history. So where did the name Roth come from? It says Roth is an English, German, or Jewish origin surname. Local name for 18th century, right? Refugee to Germany. So if you know your history very well, and if you don't know this name, you better know it well. It will call the Rothschilds. I want you to look up the Rothschilds. The Rothschild family is a wealthy Jewish family originally from Frankfurt that rose to uh, provinces with the mayor and all that stuff. These people are very wealthy bankers, if you didn't know. That's for you to go do your homework. I hope you realize that the wealth of information that I gave you this morning, if you take it and really apply it, you can truly, truly understand a lot about things that's going on in front of you. But guys, taxes is not hard or complicated. Go get your Saving Your Future book and read from page 17 through 19 and that will explain how you could get taxed on your money but today's money talk wasn't about breaking down the three ways your money get taxed but it's about the history of taxes once you know the once you understand the past the future becomes clear once you understand the past the future becomes very clear Never forget that. I know we have some very young kids on this call today, and I'm talking to them today. Once you understand the past, the future becomes very clear. And you won't be confused if you take the time to learn the history. History is important when you learn it for yourself and don't wait to be taught it. Self-education is the best education. Remember, Uncle Kian says that this morning. Self-education is the best education because it's not limited on what you can learn. 
Don't wait to be taught. Teach yourself. There's a lot of information on the web. You could get access to it. Just start being curious. Ask why, when, where, who, what, why, when. Ask questions. Question everything. Question the things that you already know and question it some more. Don't just get comfortable with what you know. No more. Seek it. Seek knowledge. And it will bring you understanding. I promise you, people will say that you're a rebel. But remember, you're a rebel with a cause. Your cause is knowledge. Once you get knowledge, they cannot take it from you no matter what they do to you. Because it will forever be in your head. They could burn all your books. As long as it's in your head, they can't take it away. So, with that said, I'll open up the call. If anybody would like to share their takeaway from today, or if they have a question, you can just press that yes button. I will call on you. So that way you can share. Um, anybody have any questions, any comments, um, any feedback that they'd like to share from today's uh, Money Talk? Uh, let me see. Oh, okay. Uh, Shanto, yes, you can share. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, another great money talk this morning. It really just brings home um, the fact that we need to definitely read um, and learn more about our history and understand um, what's going on within our economy and try to make sense of that. Um, I definitely know that there's some information here or a lot of information here that I never knew. So my pages I, um, are getting filled up with notes every time I listen to Money Talk. Um, and now I have some homework to do to look up some of this information as well. Um, but I, I'm i just mind blown right now. Like this is, this is really good information. So um, thank you, Keon, for breaking that down for us today and really opening our eyes. And um, I know my takeaway is definitely the fact that like, you know, taxes aren't bad because we always think like, you know, we don't want to pay taxes, but um, I definitely take away the fact that taxes aren't bad. It's really just understanding um, how it all works and making sure that we're um, cutting down our spending so that the taxes that we do pay are being put to good use. So um, I really appreciate that today. Um, and it was a wonderful money talk. You're very, very welcome. Yeah. High five. Uh, we have good morning, Miss Cherie. Good morning. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, what a powerful and excellent uh, money talk today. Um, all I can think of is just saying empowerment. On top of the education, we were empowered to, to learn more and to go and be inquisitive and to just learn more. I mean, what we offer here um, is, you know, Finance 101, so it's like a foundation. But beyond that foundation, there's so many other parts that play into why our finances are the way that they are. So I'm just very encouraged and, um, you know, thankful for this Money Talk call today. Um, I would um, just inject into it that there's nothing wrong with formal education. Um, formal education serves a purpose. A lot of people are self-taught, um, but you need certification for a reason because things need to be in order. So everything plays a part. I know that um, I chose the formal education route and it was more so that something that my parents wanted for me. So I went ahead and pursued it. And it was also something that was programmed into me that it, um, you know, you need it to have it. So, you know, I got it. And I'm not regretful of it, even though um, I did accumulate student loans. I'm not regretful of it at all, because I've learned from my college experience, the biggest takeaway for me was always networking. Um, you're on a ground where you're surrounded by great minds, like-minded people, people that are actually striving for something regardless. You already know that's what we're there for. So what you get out of it is really what you make it. 
So there's nothing wrong with formal education um, at all. Um, but to be naturally intelligent and to be naturally inspired to want to know more and to do more is a true blessing. So I'm very, very thankful for the call. Very thankful that my, um, my son today is on the call and he can hear this because this is stuff that, um, you know, I've been talking to them because with the quarantine and everything, they're in the house and it gets a little difficult to, you know, monitor everything that they're doing. So I'm like, hey, you know, what do you want to learn? Go look it up. It's there. Like back in the day, we had to go to the library to learn these things. Back in the day, we had to look up, um, <laughs> I forget what the thing was called. You go inside the drawer and you take the little card out and you say, okay, well, this book is at 27.2 and you go over there to the, uh, to the, um, to the aisle and then you look for the book. And now all you got to do is flip open a, a laptop or type on your phone and, and type it in and boom, it's there. So if anybody is lacking of anything, um, it's quite a concern because it, it's so accessible. So I'm very, very thankful for this Money Talk call today. Um, I hope that everyone is empowered. Um, there's so much that we don't know. And that's the humbling thing. And that's what keeps me grounded is this like, I'm, I, I, what do I really know? <laughs> what do I really know? So I'm always thankful for um, a piece of information and I just encourage everyone to take the pieces that you got and put them together with what you have and share it. You know, um, there's a couple of educators on the line and that's what education is about, sharing what you know. And then also there's a, a, a receptive thing that comes back because someone has something that you don't know. So I'm very encouraged and very empowered today. So thankful for the Money Talk call always. And I hope that everyone has an awesome Thursday. Uh, thank you for that powerful share. And yes, we must share the knowledge and we must keep empowering and educating ourselves. Uh, we have Miss Victoria Gordon. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Great history lesson, great call, and inspiring. I agree with the young lady as an educator myself. You guys didn't come up in the era I did, but I went to college on affirmative action because we were given a four-year grant and they were integrating into universities, people of color. And so it, uh, my counselor made sure I took advantage of it, even though I had got accepted in the black colleges, it didn't have, they didn't have any money. So I went on the affirmative action program. So. I want to tell you, even today is expensive. As you can see, the way the economy is going with the COVID and our young people are going back to college. Mostly everything's online, so it's not going to cost as much as it did before. But I want to encourage you to increase your knowledge, to increase your education, because there are scholarships out there. It's the same thing as we're learning about finances, the same thing you need to learn uh, about if you want to increase your education, find out what monies are available to you. So, you know, I would just want to thank you for that call. I just want to inspire the young people. You know, knowledge is power. Be surrounded by people that may know more than you do. Thank you for that call. Thank you. And I, I hope each and every one of you are so inspired this Thursday morning. It's a great morning, a blessed morning. And I'm telling you, I'm looking forward for Money Talk and this campaign to even go further and for our team to go further. So I do believe that we are going to skyrocket it and bless as many people as you can. Thank you so much, Keon. Continue to uh, uh, inspire yourself and, and bring yourself more knowledgeable concerning this matter in educating us with finances. Thank you for putting that effort in. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Ms. Victoria, and thank you for that powerful share. Uh, we also have Ms. Uh, Karen Pride. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Okay, good morning. Um, wonderful call very educational and informative and i appreciate it to continue to grow your knowledge with the um, irs because i'm one of those people that with finances and what i make i'm always the government you know 
you have to be careful because you, you want to make sure you don't pay them and owe them. And that's where, you know, a lot of times with the different businesses I do, I have to be careful with that. So thank you for that education. And I just want to say about um, college and knowledge. Yes, there are people that, like yourself, Keon, very bright, brilliant, and you, you know, you just, you just have the gift. God has blessed you with the gift to be able to educate people, to be able to um, pick up and understand different of like finances and whatever else you um, aspire yourself to do. Um, but education is also the key for knowledge and learning. But what I want to share about college and education, there is money out there and you just have to work at it. The same way you work at dealing with finances and how to grow your finances, you have to work at how to come out of college debt free. I have a daughter in college, this is her senior year. She has not paid a dime since she's been going to school. Her goal is to come out debt free. Once she heard that all her friends owe hundreds of thousands of dollars when they graduated, she said, that's not what I wanna do. She has applied for so many scholarships. She's also kept her, um, her academics on the honor roll where you can achieve and people come at you for scholarships. So there's many, many scholarships out there, but what we don't do, we don't apply ourselves to go and look for them. You have to do the work to get it. Same way you have to do the work, you become debt free and financially independent. Thank you again for an awesome call. Um, I'm, I'm, I love listening to your calls. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Ms. Karen. And you are absolutely right. There is free, you know, every college that you apply to have enough money to have you go there for free. It's just that no one ever taught you how to get it. That's right. That is mm -hmm. so true. That is so true. I wish I knew. Oh, yes. The things I knew today, that I know now, my kids will never go through that. Even if they don't even want to go to school, they'll have it for free. Because the money's there for you guys. Yes, it's just it is. I know what you how to get it. It's there. Yes, I just want to say I, I taught I taught my daughter. I remember times that she was very angry at me in high school and she wanted to go out and party. And I said, um, no, you sit at this computer and you research different scholarships. And when she got those scholarships, I mean, she was like elated because she was like, mom, I got another one. I got another one. And with the university that she went to, the president, he met her at one of her scholarships where she was receiving the money. And he said, this is the third time I've come to one of these places and just this young lady's getting a new, another scholarship. So you got to teach your kids. Yep, they might want to go out, hang out with their friends, but you got to do the work first. Then you can have fun. So that's what I want to say. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the truth. You know, that's definitely yep. the truth. And in my particular experience, and I want to interject that because my son is on the under line so he can understand. College was something that was chosen for me. And beyond that, it was at that time in turn before the whole rich dad, um, poor dad philosophies came out and that was really promoted. Um, you needed it to get a good job, to get a good job. That was the plan. Get a good job, to get a good <laughs> job, go to college, get that degree. And that's all that's there. We are so blessed and fortunate and lucky to have the, the mental breakthrough in terms of there's other paths. You don't have to choose that path. And yes, no. I had some, yes, I had scholarships, a few scholarships. I wish I, I wish I grinded more to get scholarships, but I worked through high school and I worked through college. <laughs> I worked all the way till I couldn't work after, you know, certain circumstances. But um, in terms of scholarships, if anybody has that information, please, please, please share it with me because I want my children to, to be way better than me. You know, that's, yeah. my, that's my goal. Be, do better than me. Excel way past me. Please do because if I knew then what I know now, you know, but the the thing is that keeps me encouraged is that I keep going, you know, we keep going. So that's why I said this call is so powerful because um, that little bit that we know can change our lives forever. Ignorance is so expensive. So it's like, come on now. Thank you so much for the call, Keon. Thank you so much for your consistency and your ability to keep, keep, keep giving the knowledge. Yes. Thank you so yes. much. And, and yes. thank you, God. Thank everyone for sharing today. Because like I said, we all have a piece that someone doesn't have. And we all have gifts within us. And we have to continue to share that and manifest that within one another. So thank you, guys. Thank every, um, thank all of you that was on this call today. Thank you. Love, sit down. 
You're yeah. very, very welcome. Woo! I think we have more before we close. I think um, I see Swan. Uh, Swan, good morning. Hey, good morning, Keon and everyone. Um, I just want to uh, thank you, like Cherie, and piggyback off what she said as far as um, how powerful these calls are because you just never know what someone is going to share that's going to be able to help and bless you and your family. So I would love for Karen's daughter to one day do a Zoom or something to help those, um, you know, who needs the information on getting scholarships for college. That would be um, something she can give back to us. And that would be greatly appreciated. My daughter is now in ninth grade. So I want to get started earlier because when my son uh, was in high school and, you know, going to college, I, I didn't really know how to help him that much. Um, because when I went to college, my financial advisor, uh, financial counselor helped me. Get, she basically did all the paperwork. I just typed it in, but she told me what to type. So I never educated myself on that process. And now, you know, so I missed the opportunity with my son, but now my daughter is going to be going in three, three more years, four years. So I want to be better prepared. So that would, that would be helpful in the future if um, Karen's daughter can do that for us. And that's uh, great that she was able to, um, you know, do, do, do the research for herself. Um, but we appreciate this call because it just uh, brings out so much talent and gifts and um, sharing and knowledge that we can apply to our lives and grow and be better off and leave legacies for our family. So thanks for allowing me to share. You're very, very welcome. And man, I tell you, Money Talks, I don't know about anybody else, but I, like I said, Money Talks is one of the greatest talks that's happening throughout the East Coast, throughout the world right now. And it's just so happened that it's only the wealthiest people in the world is getting it right now. Less than less than 2%. Look at the numbers. You guys are the wealthiest folks that's on the call right now. Because it's not money that makes you wealthy. It's the knowledge and understanding. Now you're wealthy for life. Now you're wealthy for life. And nobody can take that from you. Right? Yep. So Honestly, keep getting wealthy. You know, it's not about the big crowd. That matters. It's about who shows up. As long as you show up, you know you what you will receive. Right? So tomorrow, we're going to talk about breaking down. As you know, every Friday, we break down the goal with a plan. A goal with a plan. And I'm going to break that down for you tomorrow. So come prepared to learn more about the goal and what is the plan. And put these two things together so that way you can understand how to apply knowledge with understanding. All right? So... And the count of three, guys, that's all we'll shout. And thank you for another great money talk. Amazing. On the count of three, let's go. One, two, three. Let's work. One education for all. Have a great day, Woo. everyone. Have a great day. Have a good day.